Greetings and welcome to the broadcast. I'm your host today, Maggie Cavanaugh, with Christopher Sean Shaw. Say that three times really quick. Or five <laughs> times. Say that five times fast. Five times fast and so forth. Christopher is an amazing man of God, but he is a director and a producer and just absolutely is walking in his calling of getting the message of hope out through films, short films, and all types of entertainment. I want you, as soon as this broadcast is over, to go and follow him on all of his social media platforms as well as uh watch this amazing movie that's coming out. It's been out for a while. It was in select uh, theaters and available for churches to watch because it's such a timely message. And so fun, um, I'm, I'm just floored, okay, floored, Christopher, that you guys took on this difficult topic of church people. Well, shout out to Thor Ramsey, who's the original writer on it. Uh, we had three writers on the film, Thor Ramsey, uh, Bob Sands, and Wes Falula were all writers on the film. But Thor did about um, 30 drafts, I think, on his own before he got to that process of getting to eventual shooting draft. But uh, but yeah, Thor was uh, was uh, trying to do a slice of life in the in a youth pastor's uh, life, like a like a crisis moment, and uh, he had some um, some input from somebody at Sony uh, to uh, there needs to be a high concept. There needs to be some kind of a high concept to bring all the characters together. And so he had his antennas up for a high concept and he got a call from one of his church plant pastor friends. And uh, he was like, you're never going to believe what this church is going to do on uh, on Good Friday. They're going to have a live crucifixion. He's like, no way. The church was really and, and so they but they looked at their social media and they looked at it closer. And it turned out that's not what it was, but it was going to be such a graphic depiction of the passion play that there were all these warnings and trigger warnings and stuff. And so, but but he realized that for a moment, he and his pastor friend thought that evangelicalism in the American church had gotten to the point that an American evangelical pastor would actually probably try to crucify a live human being on a Good Friday service. And he's like, I got my big idea. There's my high concept. And so from that point on, that was the high concept of the story. And it was shortly after that, that I became involved with the project. I absolutely love that. And I did not realize that that had been that little snippet of the film had came from a potential of, oh my goodness, they're doing this now. Uh, yeah. And I love Thor Ramsey. Okay. I've been watching Thor for he's years. He's hilarious. And he's oh a brilliant God. writer. He's a brilliant writer. I love his screenplays, especially the comedies, which he mostly does comedies, but he, but he's also an author. He's a published author. He's got a new novel coming out, um, I think, later this year, if I'm not mistaken. And he's a really, really talented writer. So I, I love his work. He's one of my first go-tos. If I have an idea or something, I'm going to pitch it to Thor, usually. I love that. I, I believe the first time I seen him was on the Thou Shall Not Laugh series. Thou, thou Shalt Laugh. Thou Shalt Laugh. There we yeah. go. No, we he should in, laugh. Yeah, he was in three of those. He was in Thou Shalt Laugh one through three. Um, and, uh, yeah. And one of my favorite bits of his is the first thou shalt laugh that was hosted by Patricia Heaton. That's one of my favorite bits that he did. Like it's like 12 minutes of hilarity. Recall to my memory, which one that was, cause they're all blending together. Um, uh, so breath. Patricia Heaton was the host and he came out and he talked about, um, you know, who wraps these toys. I, I you know, uh, yes! Oh my do, God. do not do not tell me elves are happy. You know that kind of stuff. Yeah, that is that was hilarious. That was my yeah. first exposure to him, and I was like, Yeah, and, and that's that's like my favorite comedy set. I think that he's that he's done. He does a lot of great comedy, but that's one of my favorites right there. I love that. If you're watching this, go and follow Thor. If you have not seen his material, you should. You will laugh. And laughter is good medicine and it's super important. And that's what I love about church people is it definitely is a comedy, but there is a message behind the laughter. And so, but when I seen that clip of Thor, I immediately was hooked to him because... I was a mom of two boys and Barbies are easy. Okay. They're, they come assembled GI Joe stuff, star Wars <laughs> models. That stuff is sent from the pit of hell to torment parents. I'm certain <laughs> I love all of the toys, you know, but all of those, I, I remember Christmas Eve pulling one out and there's like 32 steps. And I'm like, eh, I, don't time for this. I don't even have the mental capacity for this. So when I seen that, clip and him talking about trying to even just get the toys unwrapped. I was like, he gets it. He's a parent. 
<laughs> That's great. But the comedy behind uh, the movie of Church People, well, let's just show them a trailer. Let's show them the trailer. Let's so show them a trailer. Let's show the trailer. I love this. Y'all check this out. I told you if we broke attendance records, I get the church logo tattooed on my arm. Skip, remember back when we first started? All we did was preach the gospel. Ooh, Superman works. I like Superman. Guy, what do you think? What happened to you? Me? Your dad is the one with the gimmicks. The power of the Holy Spirit propels us. I just went to church to get back to the gospel. Problem is you're trying to get your message across. Uh, the gospel? Right, right, right. And ain't nobody listening to that. A good Friday and Easter. I need something big. Amen? Bigger than the resurrection. Bigger than anything we've ever done. National headlines. Preach on the death and resurrection of Jesus. Play it. An actual crucifixion. Uh oh. By placing the nails through your palms in the right place, we hope to avoid major nerve damage. Operation Stop Skip is a go. That's awesome. You have to cancel this Good Friday stunt. Don't be so dramatic, honey. Ooh, I like the rusty ones. What are you gonna do? I told him he's insane. I've been praying for you about that toe fungus. This could be beneficial for all parties involved. We foster a yes environment here. To marry you and you could be my wife. I have an answer for you. <laughs> wow. Hey, that's today. Right, right. So tell us the story about that today, because I want to point people to uh, to to go ahead and get their popcorn, get their stuff on their way home from work today. If you're watching this on your lunch break or wherever you are and watch it on Apple TV, as well as some other platforms, because today there's just a little bit of a turn. Tell us about your story, Christopher. No. So my daughter, who's off camera, is uh, and I got up early this morning. We're in California, so we got up at around six something and uh, headed off to Walmart to get the DVD. And we went to two different Walmarts and neither one had it. And the second Walmart said, DVDs come out on Tuesdays. <laughs> so I all the ads say, you know, either digital and DVD or DVD and digital on September 3rd. But um, I don't know. I mean, you can't find it, the DVD on Amazon. But the digital and on demand is definitely available now. Uh, but I don't know, maybe Tuesday, whatever day that is, the seventh, I think, is the day. Uh, yeah. I guess that's when it's on DVD. I don't know. But anyway, um, but I want to give a big shout out to Collide Media Group, who put that trailer together. That trailer is a kicking trailer. And I assure you that you haven't even seen the funniest stuff in the movie yet just by watching that trailer. It doesn't give everything away, and it certainly doesn't give away the funniest stuff in the film. Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I literally laughed so hard during the trailer, and I've seen it multiple times. But <laughs> and every Then time you should I love the movie. I absolutely, absolutely. And I just cannot wait to have it in our collection because I see the value in the message behind it. You know, I was telling you before we went live that I see it as a, like, a wake up call to the church, uh, getting back to the simplicity of the gospel. But I also see it as a evangelistic tool because so many unbelievers, they look at the church with like that. Those crazy folks are doing that crazy stuff. And yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, people who've been hurt by the church are enjoying the movie. People who aren't believers have been enjoying the movie. I mean, most of the cast and crew weren't believers in the movie. So right. Um, I like to say, um, well, Thor likes to say that it's a gentle rebuke to the church in a satirical way, but not in a mean spirited satirical way. It's, right. it's, it's a loving satire, but it's a gentle rebuke to get, like you said, get back to the simplicity of the gospel. And it's all about Jesus. It's not about the bells and whistles. It's all about Jesus. The question in the trailer is, is the gospel enough? Yes, it is. And Amen. that's the journey these characters go through in the movie. And I like to say that there's going to be at least one or two, if not more characters you're going to relate to when you watch the movie, because there's a 
they're across the spectrum in the film, whether they're believers in the church for a long time, not a believer, new believer, they're, they're in there. They're in the film, and you're going to relate to them. And you're going to laugh. I love you it. Might, I love you might even cry. You might cry. I'm sure we will because all good movies have those elements of taking you emotionally to different degrees. And my husband and I, there's, we, we prefer to get a good solid film like this and watch it at home. You know, we love the big, don't get me wrong. We, if there's a Christian film at the theater, we go and we promote it and purchase it to support it. But we love to have them at home where we can watch it over and over again. And each time we will see something different. And so I'm excited about the release of this coming out on DVD. So I want you guys to make sure that you get this out to your friends, family, coworkers, anybody that needs some encouragement. And this is not just, like I said, this is for both sides. This is for people to understand that the gospel is enough, but it's also to have that laughter being a good medicine to give us a good dose of, wait a minute, is that me? Do I over exert things? And am I uh, pushing people away or drawing people near? I think that's a good question for us to ask ourselves daily. You'll laugh. You'll cry. It's better than cats. <laughs> I love it because I love cats. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I also want to say on the, on the note of what you were just saying, and I, I shared this before we went live, but uh, we had a reviewer who had been hurt by the church and she uh, hadn't been to church in years. And she not only enjoyed the film, but she realized that even though there's some bad apples in the church um, who have wrong motives, there's also people who have good motives and want to do the right thing in the church. And she, she sort of had a self-realization of, I really miss it. And I think it's about time to start looking for that church family again. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, that's so incredible. Powerful. So. I love that. I absolutely love that. And that that is what you want to see. I'm sure I, your heart is, is to see people come in closer, lean in and find out, you know, am I, where do I fall in that movie? Which character am I? So I love that. So I want to talk a little bit. About, you've done multiple projects. You're very, your resume is very impressive. Your, your bio. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on that. I want you to go to his website, though. It's very simple. It's his name. I like that. Christopher Sean Shaw. Say it five times fast. And uh, dot com. And check out all of the different things because you have you've done a lot of impressive work. But I want to ask you the question because I'm sure someone's going to wonder, Christopher, how did you get pulled into this? Has this been a long life love? Have you been, were you in, involved in theater when you were young or what, what drew you in to being a director? I'm happy to answer that. Before I do, let me just give a quick plug and shout out to Something Smells Funny. Yes. It's a comedy cooking show that I produced, directed and edited. And uh, Dr. Timothy Watson, who's a pediatrician in Southern California, was our executive producer on the episodes. And Scott Wood is the host. And we got uh, guests, uh, Victoria Jackson, Mark Christopher Lawrence, Bobby Collins, and Jimmy Brogan. Um, and it's a lot of fun in the kitchen, healthy recipes, and a lot of laughter. Um, we show the messes too. <laughs> so it's not all polished, but it's on Tubi. So if you go to tubitv.com and just search something smells funny, or if you get the Tubi app and search something smells funny, you can see all the episodes for free there. There's uh, four unique episodes. And the first episode is a highlight uh, featurette of clips from all the different guests that were on it. So, um, so yeah, tubi.com. Uh, actually, it's tubitv.com. Oh, okay. Let me fix that. TubiTV.com and search something smells funny or get the Tubi app. It's free and uh, uh, you don't even have to sign up or anything. You can just start watching them. But um, but how did I get started? Uh, well, interestingly enough, I actually grew up wanting to be a movie star uh, <laughs> because I was always fascinated fascinated by the cinema and by film and by actors in film. I loved watching behind the scenes because I like to see how the people interacted behind the scenes. And I like to see, you know, sort of try to get a glimpse of what they're really like. And um, I actually went to college for acting. Um, I, I went to uh, Otterbein College in Westerville. It's now Otterbein University. Um, and that's in Ohio. And uh, my major was theater performance and uh, acting and directing. But I only had like one or two directing classes, actually. It was primarily acting. And so I graduated from Otterbein. 
But over the years, I found myself more and more behind the camera and enjoying it more. And so that's how I sort of got into directing. And then I sort of fell into producing because I started working on 168 Film Projects, which is a faith-based speed filmmaking competition. Um, shout out to 168film.com. But basically, um, uh, the idea is you have a theme for the year, you get a scripture verse, and then the team that you're on goes and makes a movie in a week. That's 168 that. hours. And uh, it is, it's a short, but I, I've done several of those, did several of those with Thor. That's, that's how I first started working with Thor Ramsey was on 168 Film Project. But um, so anyway, I've, when you sign up to do a 168, you're automatically the producer. So that's sort of how I fell into producing because if you sign up, and do the competition, then you're a producer. I mean, that's it's as simple as that. So, um, so I, I sort of fell into the creative producing side of things. I love the creative aspect of it, the paperwork and all that stuff. Not a big fan. Not a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I can see that, and it, it comes out in your work that it, you are passionate about it, and it's obviously called. And I can see myself because I. I've never been on the stage or been in a, well, actually I've been in a couple rap videos, Christian rap videos, but <laughs> I know, right? The gray hair, the whole nine yards, but, but I can see, but yo, <laughs> I can see behind the scenes of just having that insight of all the action, everything that's going on and bringing that beautiful artistic piece to life. It's got to be exciting. So my, my favorite part is being on set watching the monitor and interacting with people on set. I, I love that. It's and then such I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that I think my second favorite part might be sitting in the editing, watching it come together. Now, editing is a whole thing in itself. Oh, it, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. it is definitely, I have to laugh at myself because obviously we're live right now and this will go out to Creative Motion Network and it'll go to YouTube and it'll go out to all these social medias. And I am not a good editor. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not, I'm trying, I'm learning, I'm all self-taught, you know, so I, I get to the point where I'm like, I have a high level of respect for anybody that can edit. And so even editing small things like a little broadcast versus, I can't even imagine what goes into editing a film, the hours, the time, the sweat, the tears. Can you talk a little bit about that process? Uh, yeah, well, I didn't edit the film. Um, shout out to Michael D. Schultz, who edited Church People. Um, I got to sit with him for 10 days um, and do a director's cut. Um, and by that time, he had already had an, there's a, there's basically an assembly line of, of process when it comes to editing a film. So what we once we had an editor had an editor on, you know, on ready to go because we, we got him kind of late. But once we got him, uh, he uh, he would get the footage, he would ingest the footage, and then he would work on a what's called an assembly cut. And so the very first cut I saw was just him going by like this the, the scripties notes and the script and all that stuff and doing a, a rough cut. And then I went in and sat with him for 10 days and we finessed the rough, rough cut into a director's cut. And then it continues the process from there. Other producers get to see it and then they make their notes and corrections and whatnot. And then, um, uh, so what, what was around, what was almost a two hour film is now about 96 minutes, including credits. And uh, that's what people are gonna see. So wow. it's a long process. And, and, and then once, once you have the locked cut, it goes to sound mixing and dubbing and scoring. You know, um, Dave Lubin was our composer. And so, um, and he's also got some music that he produced in the film as well. Um, he's an incredible music producer, uh, talent like Holland. Um, he produced the Joy Fatone performed song that was an original song written by Dave Lubin uh, for the movie. Um, it, really fun stuff, but it's a very long process. There's so many people that work on a film. There's so many decision makers and so many intricate things that people just have no idea what's involved. I'm so glad that you went into that because people do not realize what's involved. I mean, it's not as easy as it looks. You think that, oh, they just spent, you know, 20 hours making a film. No, no. No, it was a 20 day shoot and then uh, months of post-production. And then, you know, and then we didn't have distribution 
uh, when we shot it. So then we had to shop for distribution and find the right fit. And that took a while because we shot this in 2016, believe it wow. or not. And it just came out in theaters in March. It was in about 400 theaters nationwide through Fathom events. It had a three-day Fathom event. And it had a solid release. It was a top 10 in the box office. And um, on a per screen average, when you average out all the screens and what was playing on on what number of screens, it was it was in the top 10. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, really exciting for it to finally be out and see the light of day because I've been attached to this project since 2010. Wow. Yeah, I got attached in 2010. We did a proof of concept trailer to help envision support for it. And then I shopped that around online for a couple years. I tweeted um, Stephen Baldwin and I tweeted a bunch of celebrities, actually a bunch, <laughs> Jimmy Fallon, uh, Steve Martin. I just tweeted all that, like, you know, what do you think? Share this, whatever, you know, I tweeted pastors, famous pastors, not famous. Pa I, I was, I was all over the, I embarrassed Thor with how much I was, getting it out on social media um if you ever get a chance i mean you should try to interview thor because he'll I have should. a i would he love can, to he can tell you the backstory of how it got started and thor is a full-time pastor of a church plant so you'll have a great conversation there too he'll get into the nuts and bolts of inspiration for the film and stuff like that but uh but yeah i embarrassed him with how much i was getting it out there <laughs> um but it worked I mean, I, I, I tweeted Steven and he responded very quickly and he was basically, who do I speak with directly to see how I can best support your vision for this project? I love that. And, and that started and that was in 2012. And then we had full funding and cameras were rolling in 2016 and then the hunt for distribution. Wow. 2021. I love that. 2021's the year. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. But anything good is it's kind of like a marinating of a good wine. I'm not prom promoting alcohol here on this broadcast, but things have to savor and things have to go through a process. And yeah. I love that the finished project is out and y'all need to check it out. Go to churchpeoplefilm.com and you can buy and you can it, literally watch it tonight with your family uh, and also be looking for the DVD that's going to be coming out very soon, possibly Tuesday. And I will put a post on my Facebook. Facebook page as well as I want you to share this out. I really do because how do we support those for, you know, when we, when we're in a church and we have a speaker come in, we take up a love offering, things like that, but we can support our brothers and sisters in Christ in the film industry by sharing out what they do and Please. getting it into the hands. Yes. Are there other ways to, to promote that and share that? Yeah. So um, what I, so what a lot of people don't realize is when a movie comes to theaters, like this came out in theaters in March, the key time to see it is opening weekend. Like that, that's, that helps the box office people determine how long a movie stays in the theater. So when you see a movie that just keeps staying in theaters and staying in theater, it's because they had a strong opening and it, and it kept going. I, um, I mean, I'm reminded of, um, I can only imagine um, yes. It slayed the box office, slayed it. It's like a six, seven million dollar film, and it made like I, I think it made eighty some thousand or eighty eighty some million dollars at the box office alone, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it just it slayed the box office. It was there for weeks, but that's how that's how you get a movie to stay at the box office is you go opening weekend, opening night if possible, but you definitely go opening weekend and into Monday. And then that keeps it the next weekend. And then if that's strong, that'll keep it the next weekend. So definitely support it that way, but also tell people about it. Social media. So what I'm encouraging people to do, whether you have a screenshot of your digital online purchase or when you get the hard copy DVD, please take a selfie with it or something and post it. And feel free to tag me. I'm easy to find on uh, Facebook. Um, Christopher Sean Shaw, um, you can tag me on Twitter and Instagram at director CSS. Um, so yeah, and I'm also on LinkedIn. So take a picture and share it, tag me, tag Thor, tag whoever you're connected with, uh, involved in the movie and, uh, give us, give us some shout outs because we don't have a Hollywood size marketing budget. And so word of mouth is very, very important. 
But when you look at the quality of this film, even the trailer, you can see the quality is there. I mean, the funds might not have been a big budget from, you know, Hollywood, but my goodness, what a good quality film. And not to knock any um, other films, but we have seen some cheesy things over the years. I'll watch cheesy. I'll watch cheesy with the message. I don't care. Okay. Um, but the, the quality of the film, the acting, well, the cast and everything yeah. is outstanding. Thank you so much. I mean, we were surrounded by consummate professionals. I mean, yes. Our first AD is Joth Riggs, who has his own movie out um, called uh, Night of Sicario. Um, our our DP is uh, Bo Hakala. Our gaffer uh, Brock Kingsland. I, I mean, like just incredible talent surrounding us to to get the 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 best image. We shot it on Red Epics, and I love I love movies shot on Red. I mean, like that. That camera is one of my favorite cameras because the colors just pop. So um, we had we had great cameras, but not only it's not about the camera so much though. It's about how you use it. It's about the lighting. It's about the sound, and you know. So um, Martin Katapa was our sound guy. So yeah, we had a great crew, a great cast, consummate professionals, and. Um, and, and that's and that's a key right there is surround is. yourself with people who know what they're doing. <laughs> surround yes. yourself with people who are better than you. Yes. And and, and your work's going to shine. I believe that. And this film is definitely one for the library, but one also to share as a gift to many people. You know, I was in Costco and they're like putting out the Christmas stuff. So I'm just saying. Um, wow. Yeah. Christmas stuff. Wow. Yes. yes. So this is a great stocking stuffer. Um, I encourage True. you to not only buy this film, go ahead and rent it tonight and watch it. Uh, now, does we talked about when it comes out at the movie theater, being there for that wake up weekend, you know, that like get the word out, support yeah. the film. It lets the theaters know. What about whenever like it's streamlined and or buying it on DVD? Are those first days as crucial as well? Um, I, I, that's a good question. I don't really know for sure, but, but what I do know is the overall sales, whether it's box office or DVD or whatever, that does help communicate to people with money who can fund more content like it. Yeah. And I got to tell you, Thor Ramsey has been busy writing this year. Oh, this year alone in collaboration with other writers, he has written four plus feature length scripts this year what? alone. That's not including the scripts he had before this year. Oh my goodness. So there's about 10 scripts that Thor has that we would love to make. <laughs> so, yes. so it does communicate to possible other financiers that, hey, you know, I'm, I might get a return on investment on this if I invest in these uh, goofballs. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's amazing. Now we know everybody knows about the chosen and it being a crowdfunded thing. Is there anything like that? I mean, is is Thor considered that, or is there some way to support what the work that y'all are doing because it's valuable work? It is. Yeah. Uh, people will go into a movie theater or watch a DVD where they might not come to a church. So, yeah. how can people support other than getting the word out, sharing, liking, commenting, selfies, tagging, and all of that? What else? I would say um, at this point in time, we don't we don't have a, a platform per se to receive funds like that. But I would say, just ask yourself this question: Who do you know who has the resources who might be able to get behind us and support us in more content like this? Because there's more. It, it, it's 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 waiting to go. So who do you know, and then connect them to us. You know, you can reach I out to me on social media. Um, I'm very easy to find on uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Um, my email is info at ChristopherSeanShaw.com. I mean, there's there's a contact form on, web, on my website. So, um, yeah, there's my YouTube channel. Um, lots of fun <laughs> little quirky stuff on the YouTube channel, too. Lots of fun stuff. Those the something smells funny trailer is there. Yes. Uh, church people trailers are there. Some trailer reactions are there. It, it's it's a fun channel. You have to tell me what is the the clip from in, in your director's reel where Thor is standing outside of that building and says this building needs to be condemned, you know? And it's like what are they doing it? And what what's that from? That is our very first 
one six eight film project together that was a short film called Skip Listening, and we have a feature link script for that one too. Wow! So wow. we would love to make Skip Listening the feature, but yeah, that's that's uh, some people uh, who are familiar with one six eight films. That's still one of their favorite short films. Is Skip Listening? It's about a <laughs> it's about a, a a talk radio DJ who uh, goes deaf and has to learn to hear while he's deaf. It's very, Ooh. very profound, funny, poignant. Um, we love to do the, the, the funny poignancy. You know, and people need that. If, if not anything else, and at such a time in history, we need to laugh. And so that brings it in. And, and I'm all about movies with messages and stuff yeah. like that. And actually, speaking of Creative Motion Network, you can see Skip Listening on Creative Motion Network. You can see um, Wireless, which is a, a mobster comedy we did on Creative Motion Network. <laughs> and you can see How I Met My Father on Amazon Prime or on Creative Motion Network. So I love there's, that. there's a handful of stuff on Creative Motion Network. And we have uh, one thing on Amazon Prime and, and uh, soon to be uh, hopefully church people on Amazon very, very soon. I love it. I love it. You all need to definitely get out and get this. And we, I just want to give a shout out to creative motion network because this, this interview you're, you might be watching it on Facebook. You might be watching on YouTube. You might be watching on Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever, but creative motion network is such a great collaborative work of all types of different artists from different spheres. Okay. And, and Christopher's giving it the thumbs up. I'm giving it the thumbs up. I am blessed to be uh, among these great people. I probably might not have even met Christopher and had him been for that network. So shout out. Kevin and Kristen Collier. Yes. I mean, phenomenal supporters of faith based content. I mean, they basically built Creative Motion Network from scratch. It was a passion of love, and their heart's desire was to support the faith based community. So, shout out to Kevin and Kristen. Thank you so much for uh, all your support. And, um, and, you know, reach out to them and find out ways you can help them. Yes, absolutely. Such an amazing and their their heart is so for the gospel and just a selflessness that it's all about God and all about the creators and content, uh, you know, creators. And I had the blessing and the honor to interview them a couple of weeks ago. You should go check it out. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. I was so blessed because I'm like, this is a too good to keep a secret, you know, and I did not realize that it has started out as a magazine. So I love how the Lord yeah. takes things and just, just grows upon it and builds upon it. But they are an amazing couple. We love them dearly. We're so grateful for them. So and, and oh for goodness. those who don't know, it's on, it's on Roku. Yes. Go to Roku and you add it as a channel. And yeah. so find it. Uh, it's, it's the red and white branding. Find it, add it to that and watch all the great things on here and send your friends over to check it out as well. And check out all the projects that, you know, Christopher has been working on as well as Thor. I'm going to reach out to Thor. Thor, if you're watching this, I'm coming after you, buddy. <laughs> I want to have a talk about this. I like what you guys are doing. So he's, I think he's, you, he's, he's great to interview. Oh, I bet. I, I bet a lot of fun too. He'll get deep. Yeah. And he's a talker. Is he, I didn't know he was a pastor. I don't know how I missed that. He's been a pastor for, well, I, pretty much ever since a little before I met him, I think. So around a decade or so. But he's wow. been a pastor of his own church plant for a few to several years now. I now what's, several what years city now. and state is that located in? He's in, uh, he's in uh, Canyon Lake, California, which is about okay. an hour and a half east of L.A. Gotcha. Gotcha. Listen, y'all, you heard it right here where you can go to a church that is solid and has an amazing, amazing pastor. It's so I just Center know it's hard from his comedy. Center I'm sorry? Church. It's called Center Church. Center Church. Mm -hmm. I like that title because I'm all about balance. I mean, I've been to the churches where we're swinging from the chandeliers till 2 a.m. casting out demons all the way to the ones where you're just going to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying it's somewhere so, in between somewhere, somewhere in between we balance <laughs> out and so and so yeah I'm one of those crazy church people I don't know I'm not in the film but yeah my character probably is somewhere been. manifested you could have been <laughs> Well, listen, I could just talk to you about these great films and projects all day long, Christopher. But if you could leave the audience with a key, what would that key be? Um, I, I like to share with people. Now, of course, uh, I have to preface it with if God tells you to do something differently, then go with his plan because it's going to be better. Amen. But 
But um, I, what I like to say is we live in a day and age now where you don't have to sit and wait for your phone to ring. If you're an actor, you don't have to wait for the audition. Produce your own content. If you have a smartphone, there's probably a really decent video camera on that smartphone. Produce your own content. Practice monologues. If you're a filmmaker, start here. Yeah. I mean, use what's at your disposal. Um, what I didn't say and in, in how I got attached to church people, part of that story is I was a bachelor at the time in my bachelor pad, and I was I had this I had this idea for a funny video about a bachelor and his goldfish. <laughs> so I went out and bought a goldfish and I did this little short sketch. It's like 30 seconds. And that turned into like 10 more sketches. And I was connecting with comedians like Thor Ramsey and Michael Jr. and John Branion and Bob Smiley on Facebook. And I was posting these and sending these to comedians and Thor saw it and it caught his eye. So <laughs> I'm a bachelor in a bachelor pad, no roommates, <laughs> goldfish on a standard definition camera. And it caught somebody's eye and he reached wow. out to me because he had this script that he wanted to get made. And he's like, well, if I'm going to make this movie, I'm going to have to network with filmmakers. And he saw my stuff. So the other thing I like to say is people don't know you exist if they don't know you exist. And people don't know your work if they don't know your work. So produce content, show it to people, and um, and uh, get in front of people. I love that. I love that. That's such good advice. There were so many I mean, that's, that's, a, that's the short nugget of, of how church people transpired. But I mean, like, yes. that was part of the initial phase. I mean, God's hand was all over it. But yes. you know what I'm saying? Like, there's practical steps you can do right now, even if you're in a full-time job. When I first met Thor, I was in a full-time job. Sure. Um, I worked at a call center for the phone company and I was growing to hate it. And, but there's little things you can do. I would take my vacation time and do a one, six, eight film project and go to the festival and network at the festival and then find other people I want to work with and other people find you that they want to work with you. So produce quality stuff, surround yourself with people who know what they're doing. Like I'm a decent writer, but Thor's a brilliant writer. So find a brilliant writer, write a scene, write it, write a monologue, write, write a sketch, write a something, you know, and produce it with the resources at your disposal. You might not own a camera, but you might know somebody who does. There's all kinds of Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups in different cities for that city of people who are like minded, who who want to create stuff. They're there. Yes. Find them. I love that. That's such good advice because I know when I first started broadcasting, just with my little broadcast that I have, it was it was a leading of the Lord. And I'm like, I don't have any experience with a camera. I don't know nothing about audio. I don't and know. And look at you now. You know? <laughs> well, I'm I'm just shooting from the hip here, just trying to be obedient. But if no, God's but look at your setup. Them, you have a good setup. You have good lighting. You thank have you. you're on Streamyard. You got the back. I mean, like you're doing it. You got to yeah. start somewhere. You got to find what's in your hand. I didn't just like wake up one morning and walk on the set of church people. Like it, <laughs> it's a process right. and it didn't happen overnight. It was an 11 plus year process for me for that movie to get where it is now. So oh my goodness. It's like a good juicy roast in a crock pot that takes a long time and it's marinated, but yet it comes out brilliant and you just savor it. So listen, y'all, you have an opportunity to go catch this film. Go to churchpeoplefilm.com, buy it, purchase it, watch for the DVD, be looking at the Walmart and don't forget that the holiday season is coming up. And what better message to get into the hands of uh, friends, family, people that do not know Jesus, people that do know Jesus. It is, it is an opportunity for us all to look at ourselves with laughter, with that gentle rebuke, if you will, and say, okay, where do I fall in this? Is the gospel enough? It sure is. So Amen. Christopher, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I, I look forward to seeing what happens with the film. And please, if when you, I'll be watching your page for when more information comes out about it. And if you are someone that is looking for seed to sow into, and you're like, I want to impact the gospel in in the non non 
traditional way. I don't want to do it to just give a big offering to a church. I want to stand behind something that's going to reach the unreachable almost that can be reached with media. Media is an incredibly powerful tool. Incredibly powerful. I said it before, and if you just logged in, I'll say it again. People will watch a film where they would not walk into a church. This is an opportunity to spread the gospel. So, Christopher, thank you and your family so much for your time today. And I know in California it's earlier for you than on the time change and so forth, but I've enjoyed our time together. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much. God bless you and your audience. All right. We'll see you next time here on Keys to Your Best Life.